Hey there, everyone. Squids far and wide. Riders from all reaches of Rossi's great earth. Jigsaw bros from Boston, ADV dads from Arkansas, and Turbo Busa boys from Timbuktu. We're going to take a minute to slow down from 211 miles per hour and stop to smell the roses. Oh, weird. This rose smells like a catless exhaust fumes. That's weird. It's time for a bit of a retrospective look at motorcycling. In pursuit of selling motorcycles that are highly competitive and packed with features, a lot of motorcycles have arguably become a little homogenous. Is a 270 degree crank really that exciting if every parallel twin uses that firing order now? Wait, is the Ninja 650 exciting now? Mm, no, I don't think so. Long before the big four were printing out middleweight naked bikes faster than a Jigsaw squid fails a drug test at his parole meeting, Suzuki looked into their crystal ball and conceived what would become the gold standard for a versatile, approachable, and reliable do-it-all motorcycle for the next 20 years. We're of course talking about the Suzuki SV650 today. So sit back, get comfortable, and let's learn together if the Suzuki SV650 is truly goaded in the sauce. Suzuki released the SV650 in 1999, and it was a purposeful and deliberate entry into the emerging naked bike market. Naked bikes had already existed in the motorcycle space, both in the form of upright standard motorcycles that were distilled down from the UJM era motorcycles and street fighters, which were essentially sport bikes with the fairings removed and clip-ons replaced with upright handlebars. But the naked bike market was truly defined in the mid-90s by the Ducati Monster. The Monster used a lightweight trellis frame, had minimal body work, and had a fun yet manageable L-twin engine. So Suzuki would use the same framework for the SV650. Now in 2023, it's crazy to think that Suzuki made a motorcycle that emulated a Ducati. But the 90s were a drastically different time for motorcycles. Ducati was influenced by Honda, and Suzuki was influenced by Ducati, and the Rugrats had made it from TV to the big screen with the Rugrats movie in 1998. Suzuki had had their Jixer line of motorcycles since the mid 80s, and while they were being updated and fine tuned to be re released as new models in the early 2000s, Suzuki was simultaneously developing the SV650. Taking cues from the Ducati Monster, Suzuki wanted to make a motorcycle that made accessible and usable power. For this, a V twin engine tuned for low to mid range torque was far preferable to a high revving four cylinder engine like you'd find in a Jixer. The SV650 also had a flat handlebar as opposed to clip ons and a fairly up right seating position. While these characteristics are all commonplace in middleweight naked bikes today, it was a unique big brain move in the mid 90s. And at that time, many motorcycles that were comfortable to ride were either slow and heavy or handled like a Harley Davidson that took horse tranquilizers. The SV650, again taking cues from the Ducati Monster, was both comfortable to ride and also lightweight and handled great thanks to its rigid frame and suspension. In the late 90s, both Honda and Yamaha had middleweight naked motorcycles based on their existing sport bikes, but neither one held a candle to the SV650. While they weren't lumpy cruisers or bloated air-cooled standard motorcycles, they were boring and underpowered. Honda sold the CB500 and Kawasaki the ER5. Both bikes were powered by a smaller 500-ish cc parallel twin engine and didn't offer much in the style or flavor department. Which isn't surprising considering they were predecessors to the Honda CB500R and the Z650. Both bikes which I wholeheartedly do not enjoy. The SV650 had a nice grumbly V-twin engine sound, looked more exotic, and was making significantly more power than the Japanese middleweight alternatives while still being approachable for newer riders. The SV650 was a more exciting and capable motorcycle than the CB500 and the ER500, and compared to the Ducati Monster, it was way cheaper to both purchase and maintain. It was leaps and bounds above Ducati in terms of reliability. The first prototype of the Suzuki SV650 debuted at the Tokyo Motor Show in 1998. As a side note, the first Pokemon movie was released in Japan in 1998, and it was the second highest grossing film that year, totaling 4.15 billion yen in revenue, which is equivalent to over 31 million dollars. When the SV650 was first released, it was praised by critics. Suzuki was the first to bring a reliable, inexpensive, and characterful naked bike to market. The SV650 set a precedent that could still be seen in middleweight naked bikes today. Essentially, the new Honda Hornet 750 is designed to serve the same purpose as the SV650 did originally in 1999. And since Suzuki felt they kind of hit the nail on the head with the SV, the bike remained more or less the same for the next 20 years. And this tenure has been both a blessing and a curse for Suzuki.
The Suzuki SV650 might be close to a perfect package for some riders, but one modification that can take any motorcycle to the next level is the installation of a phone mount. And you're not gonna want just any phone mount. If you're buying a used SV650, you can assume your cell phone cost about as much or more than your whole damn motorcycle did, so you gotta keep that phone protected. Rockform is the number one solution for motorcyclists. Their drop-tested cases are rock solid and seamlessly connect the Rockform handlebar mount in just seconds. And once you get kitted up with a Rockform phone case, you can make use of their entire system. You can get the vibration dampener for your motorcycle and car mount for your busted Nissan Z. Heck, the cases are even magnetic so you can stick your phone on just about anything. Your toolbox, your fridge, or even the metal plate in your grandpa's head. If you ride a motorcycle, you gotta get yourself a rock form case and handlebar mount. They've got cases for every phone and mounts for every style of bike. If you use the code YN25, you'll receive 25% off of your order. Again, head over to rockform.com and use the code YN25 for 25% off your order. Thanks to Rockform for the support, now back to the video. When the SV650 was released in 1999, it was making just shy of 70 horsepower and 46 foot-pounds of torque from its liquid-cooled 645cc V-twin. These power figures have been pivotal in the decades of success for this motorcycle. The 70 horsepower and the way in which the power is delivered thanks to its low-down torquey power band was just enough for a new rider to feel comfortable and not get themselves into trouble, but not so underpowered that you feel like you're going to get tired of it after a year of riding. Especially consider the use case for this motorcycle. Head to head with the 4 cylinder 600cc sport bike, an SV650 will have no problem keeping up in city traffic. Now, an SV might not be able to hit 186 miles per hour at 6th gear redline, but for normal daily riding it will have no problems doing what most riders ask of it. The SV650's power and character of the engine is enough to cause to hold on to an SV even after graduating to a turbo Hayabusa. Many riders hold on to their SVs after they've evolved to larger motorcycles and end up using them as track toys. When it initially debuted, the SV had non-adjustable front forks and a preload adjustable rear monoshock. Both front and rear suspension were from Kayaba, which is now known as KYB. The first generation of this motorcycle was still carbureted, but I can imagine it was still immensely easier to service if necessary compared to a carbureted four-cylinder from years prior. Four-cylinder carb tuning and syncing is the bane of every cafe racer builder's existence. The first gen SV did come with dual front brake discs and a single disc in the rear. The SV650 also had an approachable stack at 417 pounds wet with just under 32 inch seat height. The SV, which would become known as the poor man's Ducati, was an instant success. It was affordable as it was versatile. There hadn't really been a motorcycle that was so comfortable to ride daily on city streets as it was to rip laps at a racetrack. The SV650 was first sold in the standard naked trim as well as an S model that came with a half fairing, lower handlebars, and slightly higher foot pegs. The S model was originally not sold in America, but was so sought after that American motorcycle magazines ran articles with instructions on how to import the S model to the States. As a result, for the following model year, Suzuki did release the S model in America as well. The SV has remained fundamentally the same since 1999, but has seen some key updates throughout the years. The second generation SV was released in 2003. It had a new frame, a new swing arm, a digital speedometer, and fuel injection. With this generation, the SV650 saw a slight bump in power, but the curb weight also increased from 417 to 437 pounds. In 2004, to make this motorcycle even more approachable for beginners, Suzuki gave the SV a new subframe with a lower seat height to allow shorter riders the ability to easily flat foot the bike. By the end of the second generation of the SV, it had become a relatively modern motorcycle with semi-adjustable suspension, fuel injection, dual spark plugs per cylinder, and optional ABS. In 2009, the trim options changed as well. The naked variant of the SV was replaced with the SVF650 Gladius much to the chagrin of SV650 simps everywhere. This was sold alongside the SV650S, which had the full fairing. The exact year in which the SV650, as it had been known, was superseded by the Gladius depends on your geographic locations, as some countries held on to certain trim models and variants for a few years longer than others. But by 2012, the naked SV650 had been replaced by the Gladius globally, while some countries sold the fully fared versions of the SV until 2014. Confused yet? Me too. It doesn't matter. And then they tried to do some revisionist history when they brought back the normal SV in 2016. It was designed in the same style as the SV650 from previous generations to the Gladius. Essentially, in 2016, Suzuki said, Sorry for confusing everyone, here's the SV650 again. For the 2017 model year, it was released again as the SV650, which resembled much of the original styling of the bike before the Gladius came along. 
The current generation of the SV650 is making right around 75 horsepower, it has optional ABS, and it has a low RPM assist which can help prevent stalling at low speeds, in addition geared towards more beginner riders. The SV650 was also sold in an X variant at this time which gave it a more cafe racer aesthetic with small bikini fairings. Now while the SV650 is nearly the same as it was when it was released in 1999, it has somewhat been updated with components like an LCD dash and LED lighting. The SV650 can still be bought brand new in the 2023 model year for just $7,399. It's hard to deny that the SV is a super versatile, value-driven motorcycle at that price point, but you also need to remember a key reason it is priced so competitively is it's pretty darn close to a 20-year-old motorcycle even if you buy one from the dealership with zero miles on the odometer. After being the middleweight naked bike top dog for so long, the rest of the big four have had plenty of time to catch up. There are countless bikes that offer a similar or more competitive package that have many of the same value propositions as the SV650. Bikes like the MT-07 for instance are versatile, comfortable, quick to ride, peppy and fun and make a great sound from the engine. But Yamaha is more quick to implement new engineering technology to make their bikes better year after year, whereas Suzuki got it right in 1999 and just sort of opted to ride the wave for as long as possible. That being said, the SV650 is still considered to be a great platform for many types of riders. There are countless secondhand SVs available for sale for pennies on the dollar, and these bikes are known for being unkillable. Their torquey, rumbly V-twin is nowhere near as high-stressed as high-revving four-cylinder sport bikes, and Suzuki has had so many years of experience making these engines, there really is no reason why an SV650 engine can't run forever if it's moderately cared for. Like many motorcycles with a long tenure, the SV650 also has a massive catalog of aftermarket parts and community knowledge and support. If there's any sort of modification you want to do to your SV650, tons of people have already done it and they're probably nerdy enough to have outlined the entire process in detail, down to the exact torque spec on the bolts or on some online forum somewhere. SVSwingersMeet.com maybe. Since the inception of the bike, it's been lauded as a beginner track toy and has seen many praise in different twin cylinder motorcycle races, but the versatility of the SV does not end with road use and track duty. Many SVs enthusiasts have built these bikes into scramblers, adventure bikes, cafe racers, and more. It's really a do-it-all platform that just about any rider could make use of in some way or another. So, where does that leave the SV650 in the grand scheme of motorcycling? It's an iconic motorcycle without question. It set trends and created an archetype of what a versatile, reliable, and fun motorcycle could be. But in 2023, does the SV still hold its own? If you're fine with the ubiquitous jack-of-all-trades, master-of-none motorcycle, then the SV is still the GOAT. But in a growing market where much of the attributes of the SV can be found elsewhere in an overall more contemporary motorcycle, it might not carry the same weight anymore. For a cheap first or second bike, it's really hard to go wrong, but a brand new SV650 from the dealership seems like an odd decision when there are so many other torque forward comfortable bikes that make a good sound with more available features and modern styling. How does Suzuki expect to keep selling brand new SV650s if older ones can be bought for $1000 that just won't die? You think about the world in which the Honda Hornet 750 exists, the MT-07, I mean there's just so many good upright little torquey naked bikes, but I think the Suzuki SV650 is still the GOAT for a reason. Thanks for making it to the end of the video. This was a fun one. I hope all the SV650 stands feel seen. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll catch you later. Fact. According to Guinness World Records, set has the largest number of meanings of any word in the English language, with 430 different senses listed in the 1989 edition of the Oxford English Dictionary. Goodbye.